Hey everybody, welcome to TurboViews Extra, where we take a closer look at something in the Turbo Graphics collection that is not a game. And today, we're going to take a closer look at 1990s handheld, Turbo Express. with the ultimate in handheld portability, the Turbo Express. Turbo chip technology you can take anywhere. The same Turbo chip that plays your favorite Turbo Graphics 16 games drives your handheld Turbo Express. For a limited time- Oh man, I can't help it. I love those cheesy Turbo Graphics 16 Turbo Duo promotional videos. You know, when I was younger, seeing those videos at Toys R Us up on the monitors, you know, it was the same thing at Radio Shack, I believe. They would show you the latest and greatest thing and try to sell you on their system and accessories. And well, for me, it worked because that's why I bought the TurboGrafx-16. I saw it on those monitors. And that's also why I really, really wanted the Turbo Express shortly after. But I'll tell you what, when it was first released, the Turbo Express was $249.99. So this was not something that was easily accessible. And to be honest with you, I was more interested in the CD-ROM add-on, which was also very expensive. If you watched previous episodes of TurboViews Extra, you've heard all about that. So I sort of put the Turbo Express on the back burner. Now, before we get into my story about the system, um, this is my original Turbo Express box insert and everything. If we spin it around, you can sort of get an idea of exactly what this is. If you take the TurboGrafx-16 base unit, which we covered in the first episode of TurboViews Extra way back 100 years ago in standard definition and you scrunch it down into a handheld with an LCD screen or I guess they call it an active matrix screen you add in some sound you give it a headphone jack and you've got the Turbo Express so it's basically a portable TurboGrafx-16 system now it was called the PC Engine GT in Japan. It was released in 1990 there as well as here where it was renamed Turbo Express. If you look next to me here, I have the TurboGrafx-16 original box. You can see they sort of carried over that same orange and black color scheme. And I guess that's sort of what they were going for. At the time, the competition really was the Nintendo Game Boy, the Sega Game Gear, and the Atari Lynx. But the difference is, those systems had original games developed for them. They were almost their own systems. The Turbo Express allowed you to take Turbo Graphics games developed for the Turbo Graphics on the go. Um, it sort of reminds me of the Sega Nomad, which I think a lot of people are familiar with, but the Sega Nomad came out five years later almost. That particular system allowed you to take Genesis games around. This allowed you to take Turbo Graphics games. If we go ahead and open this up, we can take a closer look at what we're doing here. If we open it up, you see we slide the styrofoam out. Um, there used to be a little piece of foam on top of this. You can see there's a cutout here. Unfortunately, I lost it over the years. I'm not really sure where it went, but it's okay because the Turbo Express instruction manual uh, protects the system, um, <laughs> I guess. And then of course we have Top Gear, some Turbo Graphics stuff you can buy. These always came packaged in there. You know how that goes. And this is the Turbo Express. And I'll tell you what, holding it in your hands, it still has some real substance. Like it, it always felt that way. But what's interesting is when you're holding it as an adult, it still feels like a chunky piece of hardware, like it's made extremely well. Um, it has an active matrix color LCD screen, which I guess is the same exact size as the Game Boy was, except it's backlit and it's in color, which at the time was kind of unique. I mean, and that's probably one of the reasons why the price was so darn high. You have your buttons very similar to the Game Boy here on the one side. You have your D-pad here on the left and then select and run at the bottom. Now, one of the advantages of the Turbo Graphics, I guess you could say one of the features was it had the word turbo in the name and it had turbo switches on the controllers and they carried that over to the handheld. So you literally have turbo switches here to allow for super duper turbo buttons um, which is really cool that they actually had that. If we look on the left side here, we have a headphone jack. I think you pretty much know what that is. You have a volume control for that headphone jack. And then underneath it is a brightness control in order to 
change the brightness of the screen itself. And that does come in handy depending on the game you're playing. And then over here we have an adapter so you can plug it into the wall in case you don't want to use the batteries, which we're going to get to here in a second. We have a place to put the wrist strap, which I don't seem to have anymore, but it did come with the system. And also we have tuner in, which is for the TV tuner. It actually had a built-in television tuner at the time, which was again in 1990, pretty darn cool because if you consider that this was in color and it had a pretty darn nice screen for its time, if you were able to get television programs through it, that was actually a plus. Now these days there's no TV being broadcast over analog, so you can't really use it anymore. But if you were able to pick yourself up the TurboVision tuner, you could actually connect this to the side of the system and it actually would pick up television signals. A lot of people have been able to find ways to utilize this as a portable monitor because it does have an audio video in here on the side. I remember at one point we lost power in the house and I grabbed my Turbo Express, I connected the Turbo Vision and I was able to pick up the news channels and figure out what was going on with the storm or whatever was happening. And we actually for almost 24 hours were able to watch TV. Now, <laughs> I didn't get a lot of battery life out of it, so it didn't last that long, but that at least gives you an idea of a usage for the Turbo Vision tuner. Let's continue on with the Turbo Express. If you look here, this is actually where the game goes. You take it, you slide it in, and then you turn on the power, and there you go. It actually holds it in place. The power button here holds it in place, and then you play the game. Obviously, it's not turning on yet because we've got to put in the batteries. If we take a look here, <laughs> I actually have six batteries sitting in this piece of foam. I don't know what era these batteries are from, so I'm going to assume that we really should not be utilizing these batteries. So let's go ahead and let's put in some batteries. While we do that, um, the battery life on the Turbo Express is notorious for being one of the negatives of the system. But obviously all we do is we open up the plate and we've got six batteries that fit in the back here. Yeah, and these six batteries are literally known to only last about maybe three hours, maybe if you're lucky. So it drained batteries really, really quickly. And trust me, I know. So there we go. We've got all six batteries in. We close the compartment and now turn it on. And there is Bonk's Revenge. You can see the screen is very small. It's not necessarily the most ideal gaming situation because the screen is small and in comparison to today's cell phones and stuff, which we're so used to, the brightness actually is a little bit darker than you might like. You can adjust the brightness here to your liking. It all depends on how light the surroundings are. But yeah, I mean, the screen is pretty nice. The colors are beautiful. They look great. It does have a little bit of what people call ghosting because of the fast motion and stuff, it tends to blur things as they're happening. And it's such a small screen that if you're trying to read text and stuff, it's really difficult. I'm a big Tony Scott movie fan, and this is a sidebar, but there was a movie called Enemy of the State directed by Tony Scott. And in that, they actually utilized the Turbo Express. And I thought that was really cool. I remember sitting there thinking, hey, that's a Turbo Express. Wonder how many people in the audience actually knew what that was <laughs> at the time. I think it was 1997 that movie came out. So by then, this system was long gone. The Turbo Express was long gone. So yeah, I wonder how many of those people actually knew what that was. But anyway, this is the Turbo Express. Aside from the really, really, really short battery life, they're also known to have some blown pixels right out of the box. So if you're going to buy a Turbo Express for yourself, you definitely want to make sure you give it a once over and see if you've got a blown pixel here and there. Eventually the price went down to I think $199.99 and then they finally just discontinued the system. When the price went down and I was able to save enough money, I really wanted one. But guess what? Couldn't find it anywhere. Nobody around here stocked it anymore. I couldn't buy it. Toys R Us couldn't order it. So I, I sort of gave up hope. Well, I guess I'm just not meant to have the Turbo Express, right? My family and I went to Canada on a trip. And I remember this very well. It was Toronto. We visited Toronto all the time and we were walking by an electronics store. And there in the window was this box. And I gotta be honest with you, it was in the window like this. You know what that means, sun fade. Luckily, 
this has zero. I don't know how. They must have either just received it or it was somewhere else and they just put it up in the front because I remember the sun was gleaming on it, you know? And I busted in there and I talked to the guy and it was brand new, it had never been used before and it was literally 190 something American. Like I don't remember what the exchange rate was at the time, but it, was, it essentially equated to a little bit less than it would have been here in America for a new one. So I sprung for it, I grabbed it and here it is. So I got this guy into the hotel because <laughs> there's no way I was gonna wait until I got home to play this. Plugged in the batteries I picked up and um, I don't think I actually had any games with me. So I'm pretty sure I went into the hotel, turned it on and saw this. <laughs> but hey, it's a start, right? And you know the neat part about it, I got this system in late 92. By that point I had a pretty decent turbo graphics collection and I also was able to get the TV game computer which is the PC engine converter. And the nice part is the Turbo Express does allow for Japanese PC engine games with the converter. This is Street Fighter II Champion Edition. And if you look, I have it playing here. I used to take this to school. It's a little bit bulky here. I used to take this to school with me. And at the time, finding an arcade quality version of Street Fighter II on a handheld wasn't gonna happen. I gotta tell you, people were pretty impressed at this. Now, it's not the easiest to control, but you're sitting here and you're playing Street Fighter II that looks a lot like the arcade version. And even though it was bulky, it was a neat little thing that a lot of people don't talk about, but it was something that you could do. So this was a really great system and I loved it and no one else I know obviously had it. Now, we talked about the blown pixels with the screen. If you're gonna look for a Turbo Express, you also need to be careful because the capacitors inside this thing also go bad. That leads to a bad screen and bad sound. It's a problem with the Turbo Duo as well. It's a problem with the TurboGrafx CD-ROM. It's just the kind of capacitors they used at the time just go bad. Now, I gotta thank Jody out in Canada, man. Thank you so much. He went there and he put all new caps on this puppy and now it is like golden and brand new. I'm pretty good at doing capacitor work, but not on something as small and intricate as a Turbo Express. So I will gladly hand it off to a friend. If you wanna buy a Turbo Express for yourself, I would suggest you really take a look at the condition of the shell. You take a look at the condition of the screen, make sure there aren't any blown pixels and also make sure someone has gone over and redone the capacitors. If they haven't been done yet, they're going to need it eventually. Even if the thing's been sitting there, they just leak. It's just part of what happens to these systems. If you're comfortable, you can buy kits out there and do them yourself. If not, have someone else do that or find one that's already been given the once over. This is actually my second Turbo Express. Unfortunately, the first one, um, it was just damaged and had some problems. This particular one, my good friend Chris out in New Jersey had in his possession. It was like mint condition or about as close to mint as I've seen. It's gorgeous. It needed recapped, but other than that, it was beautiful. So we traded uh, and he was able to give me this one. And so I've replaced my original one, had it recapped, and now it is absolutely a stunning piece in the old collection. Before we go, there are a couple of accessories that I have that I wanna go over. Uh, at some point, we'll do an accessories video on TurboViews Extra where we'll talk about this stuff, but I thought I would show you a couple that I have. Obviously, I already showed you the TurboVision TV tuner. You also have the AC adapter, which will actually take care of the battery problem. The, the only issue is obviously, it completely defeats the concept of it being portable. But you do have an AC adapter, and I picked that up just for that reason. Um, you also have a link cable, which I never actually bought, but the whole concept was to link two Turbo Expresses into one. If you look at the bottom here, it actually says COM. That's a communications port, and that allows you to connect two Turbo Express games. There are not many games that actually utilized this port, so it's kind of a strange add-on now. You also had some gear you could buy, like for example, behind me here, I have my Turbo Express carry case. I actually won this off the PC Engine FX forum. They had a contest. Oh, you guys are awesome, I love this thing. Um, that's something to consider. There's one thing I have to mention, I've, I've never really seen it for sale anywhere, but I haven't really looked. When I was younger, I got sick of the battery issue. And if you grabbed an old catalog from TurboZone Direct right here, and you open it up, you'll see that it actually says right here, Express Rechargeable Pack, 
$49.99. This was a rechargeable battery pack for the Turbo Express. I kept putting this off and putting this off and putting this off. I remember this very well. Finally, I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy one of those doggone battery packs. So I called up TurboZone Direct, who I dealt with all the time, and they were sold out and they weren't getting any more. So that's what happens when you procrastinate, ladies and gentlemen. But there is a rechargeable battery pack somewhere floating around. There are some other accessories you can buy as well, but those are a few that I have here to go with the system. And that wraps up today's episode of Turbo Views Extra. It's been about, what, six or seven years since the last one, so I think we were due. This is episode five. If you want to kind of get a story about my other systems related to the TurboGrafx-16, take a look in the playlist. You'll find all the previous episodes in standard definition. Um, I don't think I was wearing my glasses at the time. I don't think I had a goatee either. See, things have changed over the years. Um, this is a fun series. I hope to continue it. Next episode, we're going to actually demystify the TurboGrafx-16 for new users out there. But hopefully this gives you an idea of what the Turbo Express is and how it fit within my collection, my memories of it. I, this is a great system. I mean, I don't use it that much anymore, but it is always something I will hang on to in my collection. So this is Chris Bucci saying thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. Feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you next time.